What's up gamers? Welcome back to another episode of Video Game Gems. I'm Ginge the Ripper, let's play a game! Today we're looking at Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds Overdrive, a hack and slash side scroller created by a team called Mages, formerly known as 5PB. Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds is a spin-off title to Phantom Breaker, a fighting game exclusive to Japan. Most likely because popular fighting games in the West feature muscular and monstrous characters, while the majority of Phantom Breaker's roster are high school anime girls. Three years after Phantom Breaker's release, Mages released another game in the series called Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds in the form of a platformer. The narrative is pretty simple. A guy named Phantom attempts to get his power back by stealing the powers of other characters. Waka, her sister Nagi, and Makoto were investigating Phantom. In the process, Nagi got kidnapped by Phantom's minions. Makoto and Waka team up with Itsuki and Yuzuha to find Nagi and bring her home. In the original version of Battlegrounds, you started out with the four main characters and unlock the others as you beat the game on various difficulties. The storyline changes a bit depending on who you select and tells their side of the story. Each character starts at level zero. You level them up by killing enemies and collecting red gemstones that they leave behind. The higher the difficulty, the more gems the enemies will drop. Once a level is completed, or you die, you can use the experience you gain to boost your character's stats or upgrade their abilities. Each character's level capped at 50, and didn't have enough experience points to upgrade them all the way. You had to choose the upgrades that would work best for your playstyle and the character you've selected. You could also remove upgrades and reorganize them if you were dissatisfied with the setup. All characters have the same basic moveset, but fight a little differently. Makoto uses a giant sword for mid-ranged attacks. Waka and Itsuki attack at long range with a spear and hammer, and Yuzuha attacks at close range with dual knives. It's fun to try out all the characters and see how they differ. You can only move with the directional pad, which is kind of a bummer, but it's easy to get used to. Each button does a different attack and you can change attacks by holding a direction on the D-pad. The L button lets you swap between the foreground and background, and the R button unleashes a special lightning attack when your mana gauge is full. There's also a way to do special moves that are unique to each character, but I haven't figured out how to pull them off. Eventually a DLC character was added named Kurasu. She's from a series called Steins Gate. She ended up in the game by accident and helps out to find her way back home. In 2015, the game got an update and released for PS4 as Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds Overdrive. Overdrive made its way to Switch in 2017, and all of its new content was added to the Steam version as DLC. So what changed? Overdrive is much harder than the original game and encourages players to play together. I was able to beat Battlegrounds on normal with a new character. In Overdrive, it's nearly, if not completely impossible, to finish a level on normal with a new character at level zero, whether you're playing with or without friends. The game encourages players to play through easy first and work their way up. In a one-player run, if a player dies, they are allowed to use the experience they've gathered to upgrade their character before retrying the level from the previous checkpoint. In a multiplayer game, players cannot level up their characters until they've completed the level. If players choose not to continue, their characters retain the experience they've gathered and can be upgraded before going back into the game, but you have to start the level over from the beginning. This game features online co-op, but I've only played multiplayer offline via one single system, so I don't know if this rule applies to all versions of co-op or not. Even with the difficulty raised, the game can still be beaten solo, and some positive changes were made as well. Cosmetics were added for the four main protagonists. They can now wear animal ears, which is really stupid. Who would want animal ears on their head? Another character was added to the game called Fra Kojiro from a visual novel series called Robotics Notes. New special attacks were added for characters to pick up and switch out. You start out with the iconic lightning, but later in the game you can pick up fire, ice, and healing magic. The red gems that pop out of enemies stick around a little longer before fading away, making them easier to collect. Item buffs were also added to the game, one for collecting more coins, which is completely useless because coins just raise your score, 
one that ups your defense, and one that ups your offense. Lastly, Overdrive lets you level up past 50, allowing you to max out your character stats and upgrades, and a few more upgrades were added to the game as well. Here's a cool fact about Battlegrounds even those of you already familiar with the game probably don't know. The game was used in an official music video called Move by my favorite band, I Fight Dragons. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. Alright, time for the big question. Is Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds Overdrive a gem? Well, no. The game is fantastic. I still find myself picking it up and playing it every now and then. But the game doesn't stand out from other games in the genre, and there is definitely room for improvement. Like I said earlier, this game was created with multiplayer in mind. If you play through this game with two or more people, the cutscenes do not play, even if you're playing with the main protagonists. I get that each character's story is a little different. The dialogue and character interactions are different depending on who you're playing as. But like most games, the creators could have given Player 1 superiority, meaning that the game plays through Player 1's story instead of the others. The exchangeable special moves and stat buffs can only be found in the second to last level of the game. I can understand the stat buffs, but there's no reason you shouldn't be able to find special moves scattered throughout the game. A decent number of players wouldn't play through this game more than once, I guarantee it. Those players wouldn't get much time to play around with the new items. I had to make a quick edit to the script here. While capturing the rest of the footage for the video, I found another item buff that boosts your experience. It was dropped by an enemy in the prologue level. Now I'm not quite sure how the item buffs and special moves drops work. If anybody has it figured out, let me know in the comments. Other than the DLC characters, every character you unlock is somebody important you've met in the game. If you select any of the characters besides the four main protagonists, then you'll play through the game without any cutscenes. This makes sense as some characters have no business being in some of the places you travel. But it would be cool if each character had their own ending. But instead, if you beat the game with any of the extra characters, Makoto's ending plays because she's the mascot of the series. Even with all the exposition, Phantom is not the final boss in the game. In fact, I don't even think he shows up in the game. Unless this big dude right here is Phantom, the game doesn't really tell you. You don't even get to fight this guy, he just shows up in the background of one level and then he's never seen again. That's kinda weird since we see him in the introduction. You'd think he'd be an important character. This leads me to believe that this game is just a side story to the original Phantom Breaker. Your goal is to rescue Waka's sister so you can get back to the main story. But that's just a theory. A Jinj theory! Thanks for watching. From this point on, I'm going to talk about stuff that happens near the end of the game. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, skip to the time on the screen. Instead of Phantom, we get this character named Infinity as our final boss. He doesn't really have any exposition or a story arc. He's just sort of there to stop us from leaving the parallel world and getting back to our own. He's not in the introduction like Phantom is, but he's on the thumbnail of the game, so you think he'd be important. Infinity is one of the unlockable characters in this game. This could have been a great opportunity for us to get to know him as a character and give us a reason to care about him. That was really a missed opportunity. To be fair, Infinity is a really fun character to play as. Compared to the others, he's overpowered. A nice reward for completing the game on hard. He's bigger, faster, and stronger too. But most importantly, he's the first member of the DK crew! Another unlockable character in the game is named L. She appears at the end of the game and decides not to escape with you because she has some unfinished business to take care of. We never find out what her unfinished business is. This was another missed opportunity. It would have been nice to give her one exclusive level at the end of the game to tie up this loose end. But instead, like every other character, we are treated to Makoto's ending. Even though I couldn't call this game a gym, it doesn't mean that it's a bad game. I really enjoyed it. It has catchy music, great visuals, immersive gameplay, and some unique characters. But the game has much more potential that just wasn't utilized. 
A little more detail really could have made Overdrive shine. It's not too late. The fact that this game was added to the Switch's online library means that it's still relevant. Mages could still update this game with more detail and show off its true potential. That's it for today's video everyone, thank you so much for watching, and keep on gaming!